a fantastically kind of heartfelt and oh that works as well. You can have one. I can have one. Hello, one two. Yeah, brilliant. We don't really need it, do we? But that's okay. Um, yeah, I thought, I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Very, very heartfelt and very, very naturalistic. And I was surprised to see you starring in it because his name's not down in the credits. So that was a, a nice little surprise. Um, I was wondering where did this start off for you? Where did this kind of where was the beginning of all this? Uh, well, it started with my music video production company that went bankrupt. Actually, I, I shut it down. I didn't go bankrupt. Um, due to, as I wrote it at, at the beginning, uh, illegal downloading. Uh, the record labels basically changed the way they market to artists, and they started putting money, stopped putting money in music videos, and that's what how I was making my living. And it says there are 700 music videos. Those are official music videos, but I actually produced 900 of those. Uh, but some didn't come out or were done differently. Um, so you're left with all these betas and all these masters and, and an office, and there's nothing left. And I felt quite empty. And um, I just decided to, to do the only thing that I could do with what I, I, uh, the experience I garnished uh, throughout those years, which was to uh, make a, a film. You know, if I was a painter, I would have painted. If I was a writer, I would have done a novel. Um, all I could do is make images. I don't know what I did. Sometimes I look at it and I'm not quite sure what it is that I did. But um, this is what I do, you know. So I, I, I decided to use that experience to, to make this film. And um, in terms of me playing in the film, that was not planned. I had another actor in line up to two weeks before the shooting. We had done screen tests and whatnot. Uh, and then. Um, it basically didn't work out with the unions, yeah. and I had put on put down some money, and everything was going to fall apart. And I just basically closed my eyes and just plunged even further into the whole process of writing, directing, and producing it. Well, you did a, you did an absolutely fantastic job, I have to say. Oh, thank you. Um, I was wondering also um, how much how much of this would you say is autobiographical then? You know, uh, just the beginning. I mean, the rest. I mean, my dad is in great shape, and my I have a son. So I do have this father-son type, you know, conscience of what I leave behind and what my dad's left me behind. So I am thinking about these things in midlife right now. But I mean, my son is uh, eight and a half. I don't have a conflict with him, and uh, my my dad is doing great. So it's really just more, uh, you know, like you see the Kodak sign. I'm quite proud of having shot that film in uh, in film with film stock, and Kodak now has gone bankrupt. Yeah. I saw my own industry go bankrupt with music videos. Uh, I'm worried about film. I think film is dead. Uh, yeah. I really do. Uh, I know it sounds weird to say, but I think cinema is dead. Right. I think we just don't know it yet. And uh, you know, festivals like this one are very, very important to show films like this. And um, but film is dead. There you go. Um, I was also wondering. I mean, uh, the relationships in the film are all quite isolated. There's a lot of isolation around the main character. It's quite bleak. Is that? I was wondering, I saw that as a reflection of kind of the industry you worked in, the music industry, and I suppose now, now you said that also, the film industry. Is that a reflection somehow, the relationship between the, the different generations? Um, no, not, not necessarily. I mean, there was a lack of communication that I feel is important. I feel we've never had as many tools and telephones to communicate with one another, but we don't communicate at all with one another. You know, we have Skype and we have emails and text messages and. So uh, that's really all I wanted to, to show. And again, because of lack of money, you know, it's all my personal savings that did this film. There's no government subsidies or no you know, studio financing or nothing. Uh, you know, I had lack of actors in the film, so I, I had to create these mise en scenes where uh, you know, the, the characters would be alone. Um, so it just worked out that way, where there was this isolation and this loneliness. And you know, you're faced with death. I mean, it's, it's also a man. I, I, I shot this film. Um, right before I got married to my wife, who's in the, the, the audience right now. And um, to me, it was the end of, of uh, being a man, you know, living single, and before getting into the second part of my life, which was more of a family-oriented life, and actually uh, putting that f you know, first and foremost, which I think is a central message in this film. Okay, fantastic. Um, and what was the, uh, it's obviously a massively complicated job, not only are you producing the film, but you're also directing it, and you're acting in it, and you're not doing it digital, you're doing it in film. Um, so I was wondering, kind of, what was, the, what was the process like for you 
in terms of kind of what steps did you have to go through in order to rehearse, for example, essentially with yourself? Um, what steps did you go to to procure the right amount of film? Because a lot of people don't kind of think about that when they think about films. Oh, you know, but you know, it costs you so much per foot, and you've got to buy God knows how many feet of this stuff. Um, well, I mean, I, I had a budget, and my experience as a producer allowed me to respect my budget. You know, I, I went a bit over budget, but I mean, I, I tried to respect it. Uh, I think I was really uh, invested in the project, and, and it, it gave it a very unique feel to, to be so invested into a project and have something so intense. <coughs> That's what I take the most out of this experience. Is um, You know, I, I see myself right now, and I don't see myself. I see someone else, and I, I feel like I did something when I was in a psychotic, almost type phase where I was a bit crazy, and I liked a bit of perspective. But I, I, I kind of like that because uh, I don't know if I could ever get myself back to that, to that uh, space, that uh, headspace. And I, I feel like I, I, I kind of touched something unique at one period of my life that I'll never get back. And that's the whole point of film is that contrary to digital and another Quebec filmmaker said that on Friday and it really struck me he was saying how digital because it's so much less expensive we do so many takes and we're not careful and with film we're more careful and I just realized just occurred to me that's what I did you know I, I kind of marked a period of my life on film and uh, it was just really um, just a crazy period that it now is officially uh, on film forever yeah mm -hmm. I, I thought it was a fantastic bit of acting I was just wondering is, was there anyone who helped you along with that was there someone you, you could sit in and kind of rehearse with you at all, give you some hints, or was it literally just...? No, I just did it instinctively. Uh, I had uh, I had produced a few other films, and I worked with uh, directors that basically came from a school that uh, you should always underact instead of overact, yeah. you know. Uh, better to underact, and perhaps something is abstract, and overact, and you just completely look like an idiot. So I wasn't going to start, you know, becoming a clown in the movie or, or whatnot. So, a lot of the mise en scenes are from the back, or you know, it's very sober, and uh, you know, I, and I, there's a lot of MacGuffins in the film. You know, the the whole Hitchcock uh, theory of letting the audience project themselves into what happened, what created this circumstance, what created the conflict. Um, you know, in, in the police station, for instance, uh, we had a take where the, the son actually tells his dad. I don't want to be like you. Uh, I want to be exactly the opposite of the man that you are and stuff like that. And, and we had it, you know, and it worked out and it was good. But my DP actually just told me something that was so strong to me. He said, there's nothing that, that we can put on the lips of that young boy that, that will be as powerful as what people want to imagine in their own heads. Yeah. And uh, we don't need to say it. Clearly, he doesn't want to be like It's not like necessary, that. yeah. No, yeah. I don't think so. Fantastic. Um, I was wondering, anyone in the audience got any questions at all? We've got five or five minutes or so where you can ask whatever you want. Yes, please. Can we speak French or not? Yes. Oui. Uh, dans, dans le film, tu dis que ben, tu dis que le film est fini, mais est-ce que tu continues à, à faire des films ou tu t'arrêtes? Oui, non, j'en produis d'autres. J'en ai un qui sort dans deux mois, dont, euh, qui s'appelle Avant que mon cœur bascule, qui est réalisé par Sébastien Rose. Puis je vais continuer surtout à produire, mais je vais peut-être en réaliser un autre un jour si j'ai le goût. Si on sent que c'est assez encouragé de faire, mais. It's a good experience. Thank you. I'm none the wiser. <laughs> Basically, what we, what we said is I, I, I'm working on other projects and I'm, I'm producing a film that's coming out in Quebec in two months, right. which is a major projection with several millions of dollars on several screens. And I might direct again one day, but only if I have a, an urge to do it. And if I'm encouraged to do it, you know, I'm not sure that. I, I need to take a step back right now. I, I fluctuate from, my wife goes through this every, poor her, every day, and I'm like, oh, I should never have done this, and then I'm, oh, I feel pretty good about it. And then, oh, I should never have done this, oh, I feel pretty good about it. Um, so what role are you in, in this film that's coming out in a couple of months? Where you uh, I'm a producer. You're a producer, fantastic. Yeah. Um, anything else in the pipeline for kind of later on in the future? Maybe you said you're volatile and you don't know, but... No, I mean, I, I have that project which is called uh, Before My Heart Falls and it might be pre uh, you know, presented in some European festival up, up and coming, a major one. We're, we're waiting on an answer and uh, we're pretty confident about it. And uh, I have other projects, tons of other projects, but I mean, they're all in development. As a producer, you always have to have these projects and it's really, really tough business. I mean, it's uh, just like Rain Dance has to fight to to present films like this to an audience, it's, it's a battle, you know, and, I, and I'm really worried about the state of cinema and the fact that there are so many, I, I'm 
just want to take one more uh, minute to say this, is that there's so many digital films now that, it, that this democratic process allows for gems to be found, literally, you know, the, this whole digital thing allowed gems to be found for people who would never would have had access to being discovered. So that's the good thing. The bad thing is that the percentage of quality is going lower and lower and lower, and you, it's just so much noise, so many images, so much internet. It's just hard to have people's attention and just to, to focus on what's good and what's not, and, and inevitably what's going to stand out are the, the images that they're most marketed, that they're the most pushed, that have the most money behind it, and therefore it's usually going to be horror, teenage films, uh, genre, and um, you know these films will have no chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So rain dance is really important. Thank you. Um, any other questions from the audience? Yes, please. What was your budget for that? Uh, One hundred fifty thousand, and we had uh, twenty days of shooting, approximately, and as you saw, bits in New York, some in Montreal, in the snow, very hard. Is that Canadian dollars? Yeah, 150 Canadian, so 90,000 pounds. Thank you. And how did you go about, I mean, you've obviously got quite a lot of experience in producing and raising that kind of budget. How did you go about kind of getting that money? Uh, well, I basically just went to the bank machine and I just put in my card <laughs> to the teller and I just took out the money. That's basically the, the process. No, I mean, throughout those years of producing, I was able to accumulate some, some money and uh, that's why I, I wanted to nuance that. I did not go bankrupt. I really shut down my company. I mean, Paid everything I owed, but um, instead of you know getting a toupee for myself or uh, buying a Porsche, I just decided to do an art film. Go figure. I think it's a great decision. Um, anyone else? Another question? Yeah. What What did motivate you in making that film? Is it your own experience as uh, being bankrupt and you felt bitter about it and you needed to show uh, the world what you felt about it, or is it about conflict with uh, new techn technologies in general? Um, I think I, I had a need to be creative and express. I think there's, there's a cliche sometimes with producers that um, there's like this, this cliche that producers are like these fat cats that just make a lot of money and they're not in, involved creatively in projects. So I really had a problem with that. So for 12 years I've been wanting to, to do something creative. So that was one part, and, and yes, the digital aspect of it all, and what happened to my business, it was a very, very successful, I mean, it was an international company, it was the, well, the largest in Canada, all the students out of you know, university or college would come to my uh, company, do uh, internships, you know, it was a major institution in Montreal, and I felt there was something to do, to put something on film, to somehow put something that was important to me, uh, there were also issues in my family that I wanted to kind of address. So there was a lot, a lot of things I wanted to do with this film, and, I, and, and it, it, it did this little popoli of, uh, of the ideas. But uh, I'm, I'm happy with it. No, that's good. Uh, one more. Uh, I'll go for one. Um, I was wondering about the music in the film. Yes. Um, there's a lot of kind of different styles of music. Are those, are those from your iPod? Are they from, are they, where some did you find the music? How did you source it? Some of it's from my iPod. I mean, uh, my mom, when I was very young, she, she used to play a lot of classical music. It was very important to, to have the classical music influence, so that's definitely part of my life. And I was in a rap group myself 20 years ago. So, um, <coughs> I, I'm really a hip-hop head. I mean, uh, I listen to Jay-Z right now, you know. Um, and uh, there's also the organ music that's more like minimalistic type music, and, and to me that was important because it was it was um, like deconstructing music, which is kind of what I f fear is happening to our industry in terms of film industry and happening in the music business. I felt I felt like it was interesting just these few notes and to hold the keys and, and they still had emotion, but and they they're almost soulless yet they still have emotion. And it's a bit how I feel about music where they still generate emotion, but they're they're getting thinner and thinner and thinner, right. it feels. You know, when you compare it to uh, Beethoven, you know, or Mozart, I mean, it's incomparable. So it's just funny how now we're, we're all at 120 beats per minute and everything's dance, and it's just crazy. Uh, what about the um, the rapper? Is he a friend of yours, someone you yeah, know? Actually, yes, well? that's a very good question. Uh, he is a rapper, and he was in the group with me. He was in the hip-hop group with me. So for us, we went full circle. So yeah, he's actually a very famous actor, well, famous, he's a very successful actor in the States and in Canada. And uh, he was in the hip hop group with me, so he's actually a real rapper that I go get uh, in New York. So yeah, it's full circle for us. It was funny. Yeah. Uh, 
There we go. Paul Barbeau, director, filmmaker and hip-hop artist. Give him a round of applause.